Hello, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of Retro Muscle. Like I said in my brief introduction video, the first video on this page, I run an Instagram page called Retro Muscle Mags, where I pretty much showcase my collection of bodybuilding magazines that me and my father and my mother have collected over the years. Uh, it ranges from the early 50s all the way to now. But um, today, what we're going to be covering is a very interesting competition. And I think not a lot of people are aware that this show even happened. Um, today, we're covering the 1983 Portland Grand Prix. And I'm fascinated with all the Grand Prix, especially the ones from this year in particular, 1983. So right here, we're going to show the poster that was advertised uh, throughout Portland uh, in Muscle Mag, uh, Muscle and Fitness. Actually, you know what? I don't think it was in Muscle Mag. I think it was only in the IFBB-owned magazine. So you probably saw it only in Flex and Muscle and Fitness leading up to the show. The show took place April 16th, 1983 uh, at the Portland Civic Auditorium in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I believe they've renamed it. I think now it's called the Keller Auditorium. And uh, as you can see in this ad for the show, we've got an illustration of uh, a couple top-notch bodybuilders. Uh, we've got Mohamed Makawe, Samir Banut, Albert Beckles, Boyer Co., Casey Viator, and Danny Padilla. And then below it, it lists more stars that would be showing up that night, like Greg DeFerro, Johnny Fuller, Lee Haney, Dave Johns, Ray Metzer, Tony Pearson, and Ron Tufel. And of course, there would be more that showed up. The only problem was only four of the 12 listed competitors actually showed up. And those four were Albert Beckles, Johnny Fuller, Tony Pearson, and Dave Johns. The rest, they all canceled. And they had various reasons. Um, I think I even read one of them was possible retirement. Not sure who they attributed that to. But the IFBB pro director of bodybuilding at the time, Wayne DeMilla, had to give an apology to the audience, well, the, the half-full audience at the Civic Auditorium, because they felt gypped. The people on the poster who they came out to see weren't even there. So he actually proclamated right there and said, if a professional bodybuilder from here on in gives me either a verbal or written commitment, and if he doesn't stand up to it, I will pull him out of the Olympia contest, whether he's qualified or not. So right there, that just shows you this event was very important because I think this changed the tone of bodybuilding because back then people would drop out of competitions all the time. It wasn't, it wasn't anything new, but now it's affecting their bottom line. Hands down, that's the reason. They saw money going out the door, and they were annoyed. You know, it's not like these shows are for nothing. There's cash prizes for the, for the competitors. This I really liked because he continued, and he said, These people didn't care about you, but the nine guys that have come to Portland do care about you. And then the crowd erupted, uh, according to Chris Lund uh, of Muscle Mag. So let's get to the competitors. We're going to go in order of um, the day. First, we're going to start with Steve McCallick. Um, he looked really good from what few pictures there are of him from the contest. But uh, according to Chris Lund, he had a superb frame for building shapely muscle, but he often appears overtrained, which I thought that was pretty funny that he pointed that out, the overtrained thing, because, I mean, as many of you probably know, uh, Steve McCallick was known for the intensity insanity training uh, philosophy uh, and I know John Defendus helped further that along you know he was his pupil if you want to call it that it seemed like he went through torture personally but um, they also said uh, besides needing a deeper tan his free posing routine emphasized his back too much so that might have affected him point wise but uh, couldn't be sure overall Steve looked much more muscular than his previous outing in Atlantic City at the Pro World Bodybuilding Championships Number two, we have Tony Emmett. Um, he was 44 years old during this competition, which for back then was considered old, even though Dickerson had just won the Olympia at 43 years, 43 years old, I believe. Yeah. But this would be Tony Emmett's first appearance since the 1980 Olympia. He hadn't really been doing any contest. Um, Tony, he definitely looked big. Not the best condition-wise, and definitely light on his tan. I mean, he's, he's very, very white. 
But uh, one thing you can't take away from Tony was his back. According to Bill Reynolds, uh, any time he hit a back pose, the audience would roar for him. So that's pretty cool. Uh, number three, we've got Johnny Fuller. Johnny Fuller literally looked like he was cut from granite. If you see this photo right here, it, I, his back looks amazing. He looked extremely muscular and ripped. According to Johnny, he lost 10 pounds from his previous outing at the Worlds uh, using his own version of the triple split routine and found himself at the gym three times a day. And that's not where he lost all the weight. He lost the weight, according to him, from bike riding back and forth and back and forth to the gym. So you'd say like, oh, okay, you know, he's getting some cardio in. But at the time, he was staying in Tucson, Arizona, and that's dry heat, and he's probably not used to it. So his body really took a beating. And uh, I think for the best, in a way, because he looked sharp. Uh, unfortunately, what couldn't go unnoticed, and I'm sure all of you guys see it here, was his torn pec. That definitely had to cost some points. Next, we have number four, Dave Johns. I've always liked Dave Johns. I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's because uh, when I was younger, I was watching um, those replays of the world's strongest man on ESPN2 or Classic, whatever it was. And I think it was the first or the second one. I can't remember which one. But they interviewed Dave Johns, who was watching, and he had said how he had a lot of interest in possibly participating in the world's strongest man. Of course, it wasn't that current year. But I think uh, 1979, the third one, he definitely competed. What an improvement. According to Bill Reynolds, Dave Johns had a considerable amount of fat at the previous contest in Atlantic City. But in Portland that night, it was undeniable that Dave Johns took this Grand Prix serious and came in with great conditioning. So much so that Chris Lund wrote, I never thought I'd see the day Dave Johns was ripped. Which is, that's kind of, that's like a backhanded compliment. According to Dave, he really worked hard on his diet leading up to the competition and dropped all of his heavy squatting. So that definitely helped. All right, number five, Ali Mala. At five foot six, Ali was definitely the most muscular competitor. And, and you really can see from these pictures that he is, I, I don't want to say blocky because that, I feel like that's kind of got like a negative some connotation on it. But look at him. He's got some serious muscle on him. Uh, his upper body was massive with great conditioning, but according to Chris Lund, there was some criticism regarding his legs, and I, you can kind of see it here. There's not too many pictures, unfortunately. But uh, as a shorter competitor, Ali hit a lot of powerful poses, which that's always great to see, but I feel like that can kind of you know bite you in the ass in the end because when you're hitting these big poses, like, like for example, he loved to hit that twisting back shot that Arnold made famous, and he looks good doing it, but when you're in a lineup with, top-notch competitors like this i feel like you're almost dwarfing yourself you need to make yourself look bigger when you're around bigger guys so you know that could have probably affected his points as well all right number six tony pearson the youngest competitor of the night i believe he was 22 at the time um tony came in looking absolutely amazing and i'm not reading that off a card i genuinely mean that Everything really came together from his previous contest, uh, the Pro World in Atlantic City. His conditioning was spot on. I mean, I know they always say don't look at pictures. You can't really tell. In these pictures, you really can tell he looks sharp. Um, and I think what helps emphasize his great back is his tiny waist. It's amazing. In his posing routine, he hit a vacuum pose with his hands behind his head, followed by quickly crunching his abs, which made the audience go berserk, according to Bill Reynolds. Uh, the only negative thing I read about uh, Tony Pearson were uh, his underdeveloped calves. But as we saw with time, he was able to build them larger and more shapelier. Um, but this is actually my own personal opinion. Something about his biceps. I don't know what it is. Maybe uh, here in this picture you can actually see. I almost feel like he had great biceps, but when he would hit his uh, unique most muscular that you know he would drop his hands down and crunch his abs for some reason and you can see it here they kind of just disappear you know he's got world-class biceps and then just certain poses i feel like it disappears and i don't know maybe if maybe i'm the only one who sees it uh, comment below if you agree number seven bob birdsong what an interesting character i know this guy had a, a very bizarre posing routine uh, from what i read he 
He was doing some weird roaring noises like a T-Rex, and he stomped around the stage. I'm not quite sure which music he had, but yeah, he definitely seemed like a character. But um, at five foot eight, 200 pounds of natural muscle, Bob Birdsong looked very impressive. And I thought it was uh, pretty interesting that every article that I read, whether it was Muscle Mag or the uh, Muscle and Fitness, Flex, they kept emphasizing that Bob was currently not on steroids. So he did draw some criticism for being too light. And that was quickly followed up with one hell of a physique and a very clean looking physique, which I think it's interesting that I feel like they didn't really talk too much about the steroid use back then, but they weren't afraid to highlight the guys who weren't on it. Uh, So yeah, that's pretty interesting. All right, on to the next competitor, Albert Beckles, number eight. Uh, He was 44 years old, just like Tony Emmett. Uh, I thought this was an interesting quote. He swore he would win the Olympia of 1983. And when you see some of his contest photos from the 83 season, you could see the possibility. Uh, In Portland that night, he was looking huge, but not as conditioned as he normally was. According to Bill Reynolds, he looked smooth in the morning at prejudging, but by the end of the, the night show, when that came, he looked incredible. And some of these photos, yeah, you can't deny it. And finally... Number nine, Scott Wilson. I think there's only one word that needs to describe Scott in this competition, and that was confident. Scott Wilson was the most confident-looking competitor in the lineup, without a doubt. And with reason. Uh, He looked huge, plus great conditioning. His delts looked massive. And his symmetry is near perfect, in my, in my personal opinion. Just from the photos of him hitting a most muscular, you could tell this was going to be his night. Absolutely confident. Uh, Bill Reynolds had said it was obvious from the start he was going to be in the top two. And if you take a look at these photos, you know that this competition is between these three. You've got Scott Wilson, Tony Pearson, and Johnny Fuller. Many people said from the beginning that Scott was the clear lead from prejudging. And Pearson took notice and went right for him in the pose down at the night show. And that's very smart because I read that Johnny Fuller kept trying to stand next to Tony for the judges to make their comparisons. But Tony must have gotten wind or gut instinct or he saw the writing on the wall that Scott's the man to beat. So he went straight for the lead and uh, made sure the judges made their comparisons. In the end, finally... The winner was Scott Wilson, taking home $5,000. I will definitely list uh, the rest of the placings along with the official scorecard at the end of this video so you guys can maybe take a screen cap and look into it because it'll break down what each judge gave point-wise to each competitor, which is pretty interesting, and I also believe the names of the judges will be down there. Um, But yeah, this was Scott's night, no doubt about it. 1980 Mr. International, I feel like Scott definitely deserved the show. And I think he also got robbed in later shows, but that, that's a whole other video. Um, I've always been a big fan of Scott Wilson. Uh, he seemed like such a humble dude. And I was actually speaking to uh, Daniel today from Enduring Aesthetics. And if you don't follow that page on Instagram or YouTube, I highly recommend that you go there right now and subscribe, follow, do what you got to do. But he had said that Scott seemed like a real, humble, genuine dude, and he is 100% correct, and I think nothing sums it up more than this quote right here at the end of the Portland Grand Prix. After claiming his victory, Joe Weider hands him a check for $5,000, and Scott goes, here's braces for my kid's teeth. Wow, I just can't believe it. Winning Mr. California 10 years ago felt great, and so did winning the Pro Mr. America and IFBB Mr. International titles. But nothing felt as good as this. Scott beamed before going off to find his wife, Vi. Finally, bodybuilding highlighted a true champion that kind of was overlooked many times, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably saying like, oh, well, this isn't even a real victory because, you know, some of the top tier guys weren't even there. And I say bullshit because you know what? As the saying goes, you got to be in it to win it. And they weren't there. And there's a reason they weren't there. You know, they probably didn't have the right stuff. But you know who did? Scott Wilson did. If you'd like some more information on the Portland Grand Prix and the aftermath of the cancellation of some of the competitors, 
uh, check out my Instagram page at Retro Muscle Mags. Um, I'll be posting a more in depth uh, information um, from the editor's page and the publisher's page. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and and the Instagram page. Don't forget about that. Um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun, and I look forward to doing many more of these videos. So, see you next time.